So I've now I've taped off the edges so that there's no smeared ink on it and I've got some even border line there. And I've got my paper over here under a paper towel. I mean, excuse me, a bath towel. And uh, it should be nice and soaked all the way through. This is happens to be a piece of oriental paper. And so I'm going to lay my camera down just a minute. Okay, now I've placed the damp paper on top of the wax paper. Now because this is damp, I need to make sure that I have something dry before I rub the monoprint image. So I rub the image with a brayer or with my hand. Sorry, I should set this camera up or have someone in here holding it for me. But I'm going to rub this real good quickly. Now you can just lift up a corner. Lift up the corner and see what's happening before you take the entire paper off because it's registered there. Okay. I'm not sure that this is going to print out to look exactly like my photograph, but that's okay. I want this to be an experimental work. And I see that I could lay this back down and rub it a little more and see if I can get even more color to come up. So time out. As long as I didn't lift it entirely off, I don't have to worry about it registering different. When I lay it back down, it'll be the same place. Okay, now I'm going to lift up a little bit of this corner. And I see I've got some interesting patterns here. So, I am going to just pull it off. Voila! Now, isn't that great? Now, when that dries, I will dry it completely. And when it dries, I can go back and enhance this with dry media. Watercolor pencils, uh, pastel pencils, watercolor crayon, uh, inks. But you don't want to use anything that is, uh, you don't want to use wet media because this paper has been soaked for 10 minutes and there's no sizing left in it, or very little sizing. When you buy, this happens to be some thinner oriental paper. Usually I use print paper called folio. There are all kinds of print papers that you can purchase. I buy most of my supplies online. Uh, so I think this is very interesting. Now sometimes if you have a, a second uh, piece of damp paper ready, you could pull a ghost print. You could put another piece of paper on here, rub it again, and see if you can pull up more of this color. So this is my transfer using wax paper. Now uh, in the next video, I'm going to do a mono print on a plate. So I hope you enjoyed this. Um, 
it's fun just to play in your studio and see what happens. Sometimes you get some results that you want to keep and sometimes you get some results that are just a result of play, but being playful. And that's what counts. This is a, a mono print that I started. I'm not sure if, if it's going to be done or if I'm going to put another fish on. Now that fish was done the same way. The other colors were put on a plate and then later I uh, did this fish on the wax paper and printed it on there. Uh, this is a print of one of my own paintings. I printed out on wax paper and then printed it onto this print paper. And um, of course my painting is much more distinct and so on, but uh, this can still be enhanced more if I'd like with, with dry media. This was just an exercise in black and white where I painted on a plate and rubbed out negative shapes and then put a shape on there to get the leave the whites and then I took a ghost print and on the ghost print I moved the white shapes this is where they were before because the ink was left I'm not sure you know where or anywhere this might be going but it was a fun experiment it's not exact this is a mono print this is a positive painting where I painted this flower in the background on a plate and then put the damp print paper, made sure the plate was dry and then put damp print paper on the plate and then with dry paper on the, that I rubbed and pulled up this print. I will say that this print has been enhanced. I've done some uh, shading with a colored pencil and some shading in the flower with colored pencil. This is, might be about done. This is the mono print that's in the process. It was, I painted the whole plate black and then I put some rubber stamps on it and stamped out some shapes of leaves. And there was supposed to be a bird right there. It doesn't show up very well. But I'd made some stamps of this bird on a oriental paper. So I'm thinking about when I finish this off, he might get collaged on there. Uh, but right now this is just in a thoughtful mood. I like to let my things lay around a while and keep looking at them and ideas come into my head. This is another one with the bird, and then it was very blurry, so I'm doing some ink, and I'm not sure that's going to work. I like the light spots, and I'm not sure if this ink is taking away from that, or I, I need to add more. Here's another one that's done on oriental papers, too, and uh, the same bird print. Uh, this time... I've got a lot of ink on it, and uh, sometimes they look pretty good on the back, but it's a little smeary when you're using the oriental papers. This is one that I uh, rolled on a plate and uh, put a uh, stencil of this bird there. Both this hitch bird in the shadow and then I rubbed it and I plan to finish this with the, uh, a lot of dry media maybe some pastels or pastel pencils watercolor pencils to bring out the shapes in those trees and one more one more uh, this is uh, painted on the plate the background quite loose, so it was soapy. And, um, oh, I did want to tell you, we'll, we'll, we'll paint on the plates in the next video, but I put soap on the plates and dry the soap so that the paint will stick. And I use watercolor most of the time. You can use watercolor uh, when gouache, water-soluble inks, 
but you can't use acrylics because they dry too fast and you want the paints to soak in the fiber of the papers. Okay, I'll talk to you later. Have fun playing in your own studio and try this the printing with the wax paper.